day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed the last video that we talked about on the 7th of June. And God bless you. I want you to understand, God loves you. And I'm trying to say, I really do love the fact is that the protests, they, they, they uh, have turned so peaceful. Meaning that all that stuff that was the looting and, 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 and the uh, uh, turn down, burning up cars and buildings and stuff, that gave the enemy, those people, those people that we're trying to affect change on, gave them an excuse to continue to be who they were or who they are. If we want to make change, we have to make sure that we don't sow balance for balance. We have to let, matter of fact, I, I like the fact that said this Black Lives Movement is moving and you're talking about all over the world. There's people sitting there saying, Black, you know, Black Lives Matter. What they're really saying is all lives matter. There is no substitute. Yes, blue matters, lives matter. The cops' lives matter. Yes, the white lives matter. Yes, black lives matter. Brown lives matter. Red lives matter. All lives matter. And we got to get to the point of understanding that we have to operate in, the, in the love, not in hate, not in fear. Fear doesn't work anymore. Fear won't change anything. Fear won't make you feel better. Fear doesn't change the fact is that you should put as many people in prison all you want. All you're doing is bringing them out worse than what they were. So what, what impact does that have to sit there and try to continue to, to uh, uh, just arrest them? Uh, and think every, how can you sit there, you can't sit there and say every young man is a gang member. What, where do you get that from? You know that's not true, but you operate that way and you think that way. Not all black people still, but you think that way and you operate that way. And you're sitting there thinking that, well, I'm going to, and the thing that happened in Georgia is like, hey, we're going to take the law to all hands. And so we just wanted to talk to the man. Well, you don't talk to nobody with a shotgun. You don't chase somebody down with a car. Come on. You don't stand on somebody's neck and tell them dead. You don't shoot somebody 11 times. Come on. Let's be real. God, that's not God's way. And the thing I really want to make sure other people understand is that he who hates is a murderer. And, and a murderer, God said, has no part in him. What profits a man to gain the whole world yet loses his soul just for approval of other people who wants to hate too? Let's become pleasant of the church. Let us as a church, don't endorse bad behavior. Don't be sound of injustice. Speak out. This is the time I said the church and Isaiah said, rise and shine for the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. This is where now the church can step up, not being some kind of group of people that hang in a, a building on Sundays, but are doers. Remember the whole purpose of going to church and the ministry gift is to do the work of the ministry. Well. The ministry, the work of the ministry is going out and showing that love. There's some great, I like the, the, some of the ministries out there feeding people, right? That's a great thing, right? And and, 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 and we want people who go to church to understand we, we got to operate in love. All lives matter. So don't sing out a group of people. And don't sit there and play that role with a cop sit there and say, I fear for my life. You don't need to be a cop if you're going to do that. So we went in there at 1 Corinthians uh, 13. We're talking about the way of love in the Bible. I'll read a, I'll read a few verses here, then we're going to wrap up. It said, Though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. And though I have a gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And that's what we're saying is, 
you are nothing in the eyes of God, if you have me. You can be in the Southern Baptist, you can be in the, the Church of God in Christ, you can be in Catholic, you can be anything, but if you have not love, you are nothing. All right? So let's operate that way. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll catch you next time. Amen? God bless. Bye-bye. We have had so many systems operating in the world, in our know, society, in cultures, that I thank God for the, 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 the clarity of the kingdom of God and the, the notion or the idea that we are supposed to be drawing people into it. Uh -huh. So the value systems of different people are not the same. We right. looked at the Vikings, they didn't see warfare as being a problem. Come on, man. The, uh, the, the, the Greeks, even they didn't. Warfare was a part of their lifestyle, you know what I mean? So they were, they were barbaric. They were uncivilized, they were, but they didn't see it that way. The Romans were very brutal. Right. They commanded through, through force. Yeah. And they were conquerors. And they did, but the only difference between the United States of America, I think, and the other countries was that the United States taught one thing and lived another. Right. And we did a lot of stuff deceitfully, a lot of lies were told. And we're having, we're kind of having to resolve those issues now. But the kingdom itself, and I can't say it's enough, it's perfect. The, 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 the principles and the, the, the method of doing business in the kingdom of God is flawless. It's flawless. <laughs> Come on, brother. If we can follow it, we would have, quote unquote, heaven on earth. The issue becomes that because we are in a fallen state, we can't comply with what we know to do on a consistent basis anyway. Well, I think, I think, Lord, they don't even have the power to do it. <laughs> well, well, I think I think another thing too, though, is that that's what God God said. That's why you need me, right? That's why He's saying seek me first. So, in other words, you're, you're successful if you do it my way. And 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 if you you know, Rome itself destroyed itself, right? Or it diminished itself because of the way it was acting, right? It had a lot of uh, 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 assassinations. <laughs> And, and, and just internally, it destroyed itself, right? It did. Yep. And, 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 and this country could be just as can happen as well if we if we do it from the flesh. But you know, the fact is that the country started off on the principles of freedom of religion, freedom to, to be able to worship God, right? Right. It, it started off at, with the right foundation. Yeah. And only when we operate outside of that is where you find the the the, the, the uh, downfall that can occur, you know. Mm -hmm. so, and we saw that occurring uh, along the way. I mean, right. the guys who wrote the, the Constitution, the preamble to the Constitution, the whole nine yards, these guys were slave owners. Yeah. So they had the ability to somehow or another separate <coughs> their lifestyle from their aspirations or their their vision mm -hmm. but nonetheless it was still a vision and i think right. that that's i truly think that god had us in sight when they wrote those words you right. know what I'm saying? I, I, I believe that those provisions were made for us even before we were brought over well I, uh, I, even as we were being brought over anyway right well i think with the, biggest, the biggest mistake i saw that the uh, slave owners did was uh i started having their own churches on their plantation I guess they didn't want to go to church, so they, they brought the slaves and they, they, they read the Bible to them. Uh, and what happened is that, to me, I think that was a tipping point that as, as slaves became familiar with the gospel. Yes. Because uh, <laughs> even when they had songs of, of when a water race slave was running away, you know, uh, they, they used to sing hymns in the field and it, it, it was used as a communication mode right talking about the mm -hmm. promised land moses going to the promised land uh they 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 intertwine what intertwine the 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 methods of trying to resist passive type resisting passive type of means of escaping they used that using the concept of freedom from god the god Amen, gave the spirit of israel you know Amen. Amen. So one of the things I would like if you if uh Elder, I'm gonna put this back up. Let's we can we can and take it take it with that sect as a go. But brother uh Addison, what we're trying to say is that when people actually excuse me. 
You know, I'm trying to get the right one. What's that? When people actually try to do it God's way instead of the flesh way, I, we we believe it has more of an impact uh, than when we try to do it the flesh way. When we try to do it in the flesh. In the, in the scripture we read earlier, Brother Addison, you read that. We are saying this, and such with some of you, because mm -hmm. of the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And we're not talking about the kingdom of heaven. We're talking about the kingdom of God now. In other words, God is tempting us. We're going to get what we're getting out of this is if we operate within God's system, God's way, we'll be far more effective than trying to do it in the flesh way. You know? Also, he'll get credit. Yeah. The, Amen. Which is really the which is really the drive for us. The drive is the point everybody that don't know him to him to let them know why we do things the way that we do them. Our Amen. ways are better than the world's ways are. But why are we that way? Because of the man that we follow with. Come uh, on. It's, it's Jesus' <laughs> kingdom. We're trying to get them behind him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jimmy, you there? I am. I okay. absolutely am. Hey, Amen. I just yeah. want to make sure you got, I can't, can't see you, but that's cool. Um, well, you know what? I think that there's only one pure and one true form of government. And it's the only one that the Bible has ever endorsed. And that is the government of a kingdom. We've often said this book is about government. Yeah. Just the government of the kingdom. But in order for it to operate properly, you have to not acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Amen. Lord, that he is the king of the kingdom. On, yeah. And because of that, if you understand the government of a kingdom, the king owns everything. Yeah. And even yeah. Our, even the subjects of the kingdom. Right. And we're therefore subject unto him. And the problem is, is that when we allow people to try to indoctrinate or incorporate the old priestly uh, infrastructure into it, in that somebody is telling me what God said. And oftentimes, it's not what God said. Right. I need I need to be able to get it straight from the king nice. without intermediaries that have their own agendas. And that's the problem. But, yeah. but once I acknowledge him as king and yeah. understand the government of the kingdom, <laughs> then I know that the king has my best interest at heart. Woo. And everything that he owns, he's using it for my betterment and for me to be able to thrive in his kingdom. Yes, sir. Uh, outside of that, it's, it's a sheer catastrophe. Come it's on. only going to end in destruction. It always does. Amen. It always does. Because he is the king and he owns everything. And he's there for my benefit, not for my demise. Come and on, until brother. I acknowledge him and bow before him, then anything else is a substitute. And it's a weak substitute at that. Come on, brother. And you know that mm -hmm. and I, I agree with that. That's even like you said. I, I, that made me think about when the children of Israel wanted a king, Brother Jackson. Right. And, and, and God, God said, Sammy, give him one. <laughs> but tell them what that means. Yes, tell sir. them what this type of king will be. Because I'm supposed to be your king. And Sam but you know what, said, Pastor? Go ahead. I hate to interrupt, but let me say this. But the sad thing about that is, why did they want a king? You know why they wanted a king? To be like everybody else. Because they wanted to be like everybody else. And yeah. see, what they don't understand is what he's instituted is not comparable to anything else that is out there. You, you, it, this is not like something else. It's this not. is unique and, and, and exclu mutually exclusive on its own. And you got to accept it for what it is. The problem with us, that's why we floss. That's why we drip. That's why we parade. That's why we do all these things because we're trying to imitate something that we can see, smell, touch, taste, and feel. We need to get away from trying to be like everybody else or imitate or emulate or be like something that he didn't institute. Look and, here. Yeah. What, what did you say, Pastor? To know him. To know him in the power. Not, not them. Come on. Not, not, not them. Not Woo! them. To know him and the power of his resurrection. resurrection. <laughs> and the fellowship of his yes. suffering. Come on now. Come being on. made conformable unto his yes. death. <laughs> Not them, no. but him. And that's yeah. where we make that's where we miss the mark at. We try to pattern our marriages after somebody else. We try to parent our 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 our, 
our leadership with our families, our guardianship, our parenting, our marriages, our lifestyles, where we live, what we do, got to be consistent with or gain approval of somebody outside of him. If we yeah. only focus on pleasing him, come on, we wouldn't have all these issues. Come on now. Period. Yeah. <laughs> but as we, you know, as, as we translate, translate, transition, transition from the carnal to the spiritual, that becomes our process. And while we do these Bible studies, because when we come into this world system, all we know is the cardinal. Come so on. Who we look to for approval, except them people Come that's on. in the flesh, because we're in the flesh. So but what do we move by, Pastor? To stop going to my bosses for approval on my job and promotion. Come on. I really had to get away from that, because I went to the boss one time, he got me fired. I think that was the last uh -oh. time I went to that. <laughs> I went to that. Uh-oh. I took that, that step. But when I stopped idolizing I'm making idols of the bosses on my job and start going to God, then things started changing. Because the people remained the same, but their impact on my life was truly minimized. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we go through a process of pruning. Come on. God yeah. cuts us off from people in order that he might graft us into him. Uh -huh. Those guys with folk have to be broken because it, even in the church, at some point, I was seeking the pastor's approval. Yeah. Come on. And he wasn't Come teaching on. me to teach. And, Some of them wasn't teaching me to seek God's approval. They were teaching me to teach. You need to learn how to follow leadership. What exactly. Leadership? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's what Chris was talking about. And now Chris was talking about that paradigm shift. There's a paradigm shift of moving away from depending on other people. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a, it's a paradigm shift. And this is what that's, and like you said, Philippians, a bit elder, that's Bishop yes, there. Uh, yeah, that's Bishop there's, a, yep. there, there's that paradigm shift of moving toward doing it his way. And to do it his way is to know him. In other words, and doing it his way, um, uh, Brother Asin, is to sit there and say, God, what do I do? God does not want churches to, 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 to raise up people who depend on the ministry, but but to depend on God, to know Amen. Him, and that's what God said is when He wanted to be the King of Israel, He was He said, "Y'all want a world's king? This is what He's going to do. Where well, I want to be your king, because then you come to me. I don't want you to come to Samuel. I want you to come to me, right? And, and uh, Bishop, Bishop, we we put in your uh, favorite scripture here." Before we go forward, um, this one right here. <laughs> uh, this is what we start off with because we're talking about the fact is that the, the movement and the protest that's been going on has definitely moved into a, a situation where uh, it's, it's more peaceful. And we're saying it's getting more traction worldwide, doing it in a peaceful way, doing it in, in a way. Where, where there's not violence and looting and destruction, they, they, it, it diminishes those who try to go against it. Because you can't call people thugs that don't act like a thug. You can't call people a terrorist if they don't act like a terrorist. You got to call them for what they are. And if they're bearing fruit, that's what it is. So we did 1 Corinthians 6. And, and Brother Jackson, read that again for us. I think his, his, his mic is out. His mic out? Uh-huh. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. Amen. Amen. Mm. And such were some of you, Chris, when you came in, Chris, I'm glad you're here, is the fact that was trying to say is that the, the, if we operate under the, the, the flesh way, then we're not gonna inherit God's wisdom, God's system, God's favor. Uh, and we're not all we're gonna do is keep 
perpetuating the same problem over and over again. Which some of the fact is that, you know, like most of the, you've seen the protests lately, you're seeing more of a peaceful protest. You know, the looting has it, it almost, I guess, almost disappeared. Uh, the, the, the fire, you know, fires and all that other stuff seem to be kind of like out of the way because it was trying to drown out the message. Now you're seeing the message <clears throat> and the behavior of the people is making it more effective because they're doing it God's way. And, 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 it's, and I like the fact is in verse 11, as such for some of you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you know what? <laughs> Pastor, I tell you, sometimes, though, you have to slap a person to get their attention and get them off of where they are uh -huh. for the, for, so they can pay attention. And then you can come from a different perspective. You know what I'm saying? So, 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 unfortunately, um, we need to do it the godly way. Yes, sir. And that's the honest God truth. That's the only way out. But sometimes when you're dealing with the devil, uh -huh. <laughs> I, I, I just don't know. Sometimes the only way you can awaken people, because, you know, you can be, you can be a peaceful protest sometimes. Well, you know, that's how you say, well, they said Martin Luther King came in peace. What did they do to him? Uh -huh. They say that, that Colin Kaepernick took a knee. What happened to him? Right. You see what I'm saying? So right. sometimes people don't get the message. That's why the Bible says, don't spare the roy right. or you're going to spoil the child. Sometimes yeah. people have to understand that enough is enough to get uh -huh. their attention. Because right. some people, you can't get their attention by being nice to them. They're not going to hear that. Uh -uh. Hey. Yeah, if you look at it, if you look at a personal note, though, we are. And God has created an adversary. And he's not an adversary just for black folk, but he's an adversary for white people too. Right. He's going to do his job. Right. He hates white people as well. They just don't know it yet. Uh, <clears throat> if we get out of the way, get where they realize, and, and that has to happen, right. at some point they got to know the conflict ain't between us and them, but it's between the devil and them. Right. And I believe that God is, 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 is well, it's his program, so he, he can definitely implement anything he needs to, but he is going to do something in the hearts and minds of our white brothers to cause some of them to turn away from their unrepentant ways and this desire to go back and enslave and, 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 and annihilate people. Well, but that has to happen to them personally. Yeah, because right. 400 years of practice hadn't changed their hearts. And Trump yeah. was able to reveal that. Well, see, that's a whole point. I guess, I guess we'll bring it out too. I agree, Jimmy, that sometimes, because I said love doesn't mean you, you're supposed to be like meek and, 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 and crying, you know, weak and stuff like that. You can stand up being strong. Uh, you just don't have to move so much in the violence part of it. Of course. As much of as course. just being standing strong, standing for your principles. And sometimes, you know, we, we kind of equate some of that with the civil rights movement as well as Vietnam. But let's go of with course. the civil rights movement that was, they saw the, 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 the system, the, the, the police force, the, the government uh, bringing out dogs and water and, 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 and knocking people in the head. They saw they saw an image that didn't what they want be represented of them, right? And, and then we're talking about bringing up into 2020 when our president said these were thugs, when these were terrorists. And, and, and actually when he did a peaceful protest and, and went after those people, it demonstrated, it sent the, Chris, it sent another message. Now, if those people had started rioting, if those people at that, I mean, at that moment, moved into a violent reaction, he would have said, see those thugs? That's what's out there. That's what I'm, that's what I'm fighting against. But what he saw was peaceful protest so that when he went up and stood in front of a church, it did not resonate to anybody, except for maybe the people who blind and don't want to see, but the rest of the world, it was very clear that that was, a, that was just a photo op and it was not thugs. It was not terrorists that you just ran away. You ran away people who was trying to tell you that there's a message that need to be you know, sent. So the, the bottom line I was trying to say is Chris is that the the pound of flesh. I remember you said a couple of weeks ago, you know, the young people want a pound of flesh. 
I, I really think that the young people are using a different method. Uh, they want to stand up, but they don't, they're not trying to loop. They're not trying to turn things up, you know? Because that's what I'm seeing now. And I'm seeing it in the blacks and I'm seeing it in the whites. They're trying to say, I want to do it God's way. And I'm saying it's more effective than the other way. So we said it said they operated love. So the scripture here, Elder, I was giving to you, was the, uh, to move into that scripture, dealing with love. Let me go ahead and make the next slide for you. Because I think love is- You know, is I agree with every- Go ahead. I was going to say, I agree with everything you say, Pastor. I, I read something yesterday that said, yeah, I don't mind turning the other cheek. But if you not if you stop slapping me, I don't have to turn the other cheek. Yes, sir. But you, you know, you won't, they won't stop slapping you until their heart changes, though. Yeah, but the heart- And you know, just, just, like, just like the Bible, <laughs> the Bible teaches us in Ecclesiastes that there is a time for war and there yeah. is a time for peace. peace. There, there's a time for all of these different things at, at different stages yes, and different ways. I mean, there's a time for those things. And, and right. then, you know, there's a time for other things. And I just think we have to get our directives from God to know where we are and how we should behave in every situation. Because we know that, that God commanded his people to wipe out whole tribes, to kill people, to go to war at certain times for certain reasons, for certain periods for certain things, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I think it's a mistake to just say, oh, if we just operate in love and just turn the other cheek and just bow down, at some point they'll change and they'll see our way and they'll compromise. I think that's, that's a foolish position as well too, if that's not what God has told you to do. So I think that we just have to be open to him and follow his direction for where we should do and how we should behave in every situation. Well, because know, I think it takes different things. And yes, love, we, yes, we can't misinterpret love to mean love is not just, Being I weak. just allow anything all the time and I just be peaceful and just let it happen. And I'm just showing love and that's the godly way. I think, I think that's a misnomer if that's what we define God's love as. No, well, I, think, I think we're just talking about the fact it's going the kingdom of God's way. Now, if with the going the kingdom of God's way, if God, like you said, directs, a violent approach, then you do a violent approach. You you don't you go to war if you say go to war, but you do it based on his instruction, his guidance, his way. That's what righteousness means, the right way, God's way, right? Amen. Way. And what I said it was the fact is that if I don't go to war, if I don't if if you want to go to war, you better be able to count the cost of going to war. Well, you, you, you live you know by I mean? the sword, you'll die by the sword. What well, 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 other thing too that I'm saying is that I'm not gonna if I got if I gotta go against 200 people and all I got is 25, I need to really assess what I'm gonna do. Is that the best way to go after that battle? You know what I mean? The, he, or do you I know do what's it? really funny that you mentioned that is that during the slavery time, if we had employed that tactic, they would have annihilated us. Exactly. And so we we get pissed off a lot of times when we think about the fact that you know we we fell for that lie that they were telling us we should we should submit ourselves to them. If right. we hadn't submitted at that period of time, we would have been wiped out. Yeah. So God, in a sense, saved us even in that. Right. In that we were taught what we consider to be a lie now. We were taught to just <laughs> wait until the time was better. Yeah. Uh, some, some of the stuff is just going to happen through attrition. And what we're looking at is that taking place in the United States of America now. But if I can come in on what Jimmy said, what did Jesus do when he was Come confronted by his enemy? Yeah. And what was his, what was his intent? Uh -huh. His intent wasn't to overthrow the Roman government. It was to overthrow the Roman. I mean, the individual, because if their hearts were corrupted, him changing the government wasn't going to fix the problem because they still were going to die and go to hell. Right. What I lose sight of on a personal note is that the guy that I'm standing in front of that I might have issue with, the Lord is working to save that guy's soul. And What's my part in that issue? You know, right. am I going to save his soul by blowing his brains out? <laughs> I don't know. Right. I, I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. But, but I like it. <laughs> Go ahead.